Madame Anna Foster, Executive Director of the African Center for Democracy and Human Rights Studies, UC The Gambia, Madame Nde Marichan, my aunt, my mother's aunt, President of the Women's Platform for Peace in Casablanca, Honorable Isabel Gomez, FOR's Parliamentarian, a part member of the Guinea-Bissau Parliament, my Honorable Members of the National Assembly of the Gambia here in present, and ECOWAS Parliamentarians, delegation from the Republic of Guinea-Bissau, members of the civil society Gambia here in present, members of the gender action team, and may I take this opportunity to recognize each and every participant in this hall. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, and all other protocols respectfully and duly observed. Good morning to you all. I'm a little bit perplexed because after that powerful speech statement by Madame de Marichal, I don't know what else to say. Madame Jirijir, Sakadu opening statement. Why that? So the um, fellow participants, it is with immense pleasure and honor that I join you all this morning to deliver the opening statement in this day of advocacy in increasing the participation of women in the consolidation of peace and security in the Gambia and the South region, that is in Senegal and the Republic of Guinea-Bissau. Please allow me, first and foremost, to appreciate and thank the African Center for Democracy and Human Rights Studies and their partners, that is the Women's Platform for Peace in the Casamas, for organizing yet another forum to protect and promote the place and recognition of women, especially in the peace building process. Ladies and gentlemen, activities striving for the advancement of sustainable peace can never be enough, and neither is pushing the agenda of incorporating women to be in the front line of all decision-making processes. It is definitely not a myth that lasting peace cannot be achieved without the participation of women and the inclusion of gender perspectives in the peace processes. Informal peace initiatives at grassroots levels, women's groups and networks organized across party and ethnic lines have carried out reconciliation efforts recognized by men in the material. Gender perspectives must be fully integrated into the strategic plan of every sector and peace support operations should include gender advisors and specialists to ensure consultations with women's groups and all other networks. Full involvement of women in peace negotiations at national and international levels must be provided for, including training for women on formal peace processes. Gender perspectives should also be an integral part of post-conflict rehabilitation and reconstruction programs. Gambia does not have a record of a major conflict, yet it is situated in a region that has witnessed many conflicts. Thus, many women refugees from neighboring countries flee to the Gambia due to conflict. Nonetheless, we know Gambian women experience widespread discriminatory practice in almost 
all sectors. The majority of Gambian women face gender-based violence, including female genital mutilation, yet do not receive adequate protection, that is legal and other things of protection. Now, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, the government of the Gambia has vowed to improve the status of women such as gender mainstreaming, addressing gender-based violence, and human rights for women, among others. To continue to be a harbinger of peace, therefore, it is hoped that the National Action Plan, amongst other measures, that the National, sorry, it is hoped that the National Action Plan, amongst other measures, will serve as a guarantor of continuous peace and stability, particularly for women and girls in the Gambia. In contemporary conflicts, civilians are the targets, and as such, they have been subjected to high levels of violence. The specific experience of women and girls in armed conflict is linked to their status in societies. Where cultures of violence and discrimination against women exist prior to conflict, they will be aggravated and do get aggravated during conflicts. Now, despite two decades of policy development and commitments to supporting women and girls, women's participation in all levels of decision making is yet to be achieved. For example, equal access to political arenas. And women who even attempt to participate in those processes receive serious threats. Efforts to build and sustain peace continue to neglect the expertise of local level women, peace builders, and formal peacemaking efforts continue to resist women's meaningful participation in women's rights. Therefore, the challenge remains the full implementation of the landmark document and that is a resolution 1325. Just wish to pinpoint of buttress few of the resolutions. And one very important one is that women are often viewed as bearers of cultural identity and become prime targets of violence. They are not only victims of armed conflict but they also are active agents and participants in conflicts. Conflicts may create peace for a temporary redefinition of social relations, but often does not change them fundamentally. Gains made are usually reversed after the end of the conflict to the exclusion of women and girls. The focus on gender mainstreaming in conflict and post-conflict situations involve recognizing that women, girls, and of course our men folk, as alluded to earlier on, participate in and experience conflict, peace processes, and post-conflict recovery differently. And women are often actively involved in informal peace processes, but are largely absent from formal peace processes. The increased participation of women within humanitarian peace building and peacekeeping operations is very crucial if UN goals and mandates regarding gender equality, non-discrimination, and human rights are to be regarded and respected. The states as well as national agencies, and that of course includes the different parliaments of different countries should therefore recognize the extent of violations of the human rights of women and children on a daily basis, especially during armed conflict and take measures to prevent such violations. Incorporate information on the impact of armed conflict and the impact of interventions on women and girls 
and on the roles and contribution of women and girls in conflict situation into all training of staff. They should also take steps to ensure that victims of gender-based violence and sexual violence and all other forms of violence have the right to reparations for damages sustained. Prosecute all perpetrators of crime and gender-based and sexual violence directed at women and girls in all situations, including UN international and local personnel. Ensure full involvement of women in negotiations of peace agreements at national and international levels. It should also include provision for training of women and women's organization on informal peace processes and incorporate gender perspectives explicitly into mandates of all peacekeeping missions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by stressing once again that sustainable peace is inseparable from gender equality. In the coming years, women must be allowed to play a significant and substantive role in making the transition from the culture of violence to the culture of peace. We should not all forget that when women are marginalized, there is little chance for an open and participatory society. May I also add that this forum could not have come at a better time. Our, all our parliamentarians are all heading for the FOS summit shortly. And I'm sure the words of Madam De Mari will continue to ring in their minds and they will carry the message to the FOS parliament when they were voted this year. And on that note, it is my singular honor and privilege to officially declare this debate of advocacy open, and I wish you all the fruitful and successful deliberation. And I thank you all for coming all the way to the